This video is sponsored by Noom. Visit noom.com forward slash name explain to take a free 30 second quiz to start your journey with Noom. The internet has given all kinds of words brand new meanings. Thanks to the internet, surfing is something you do on more than just waves. A forum is more than just an open space in ancient Rome. And a cookie is more than just a thing your grandma bakes for you. How the internet has changed the way we use words and their meanings is a subject we've covered in the past. And it's something that's always a point of interest for myself. Not all instances of the internet breathing new life into a word is as harmless as cookie or forum, however. As today, we are focusing on a more notorious example of a word gaining a new meaning and lease of life thanks to the world wide web. This is of course that simple five letter word of troll. For most of this word's history, troll has really only ever had one meaning, that being the name of a mythical creature of the troll, often depicted as large ferocious beasts with bulbous noses, huge teeth and a mess of hair. Trolls are found in the folklore of a variety of nations and they've even made their way into some of the world's most popular fantasy worlds like J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series or J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. Trolls have become a franchise unto themselves thanks to the popular troll doll toys which depict them in a less gross light. I am sure you can understand the point I am trying to make. That being that the word troll to many for so long it simply meant a mythical creature of some sort that come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Even the adorable Moomin are seen as trolls. The world is constantly changing however and with the advent of the internet and the world wide web trolls gained a brand new meaning. That is of course with the internet trolls. An internet troll is a special kind of web user. In the title of this video I have referred to them as internet bullies for ease's sake but there's a lot more to it than that. Internet trolls do bully and harass people like a schoolyard bully but their aims and motives can be more than just making someone's life a nightmare. It seems that the main reason that an internet troll annoys people is simply because they get a kick out of it. They take pleasure in how annoyed people get from their actions and even find it funny. The actions of internet trolls vary from tame simple jokes to outright harm and harassment. Imran Ahmed, the CEO of the Center for Countering Digital Hate, has broken internet trolls into two main categories. The first type being the kind of troll who targets a public figure, in hope they get a response and in turn have their message broadcast to a larger audience. The other kind of troll are those who simply enjoy causing harm to others. Imran Ahmed spoke of these kinds of trolls, saying that these trolls get pleasure from upsetting those they target with abuse, so if their victim responds to it, it only encourages them to continue. This should give you a good example on what exactly a troll is online. Though as mentioned, internet troll has taken on a much larger meaning too. It can even include just being a bit goofy or pulling a joke online. Wikipedia's page for internet trolls demonstrates a troll's work by showing an image of one of their pages being vandalized by a troll, a very good example of just how much falls into the realm of trolldom. Thanks to the internet, troll has become more than just a noun. Troll has become a verb too. To troll someone means to annoy them online. This created the past tense of troll and the term of trolling too. The internet has seriously breathed some new life into the world of troll for better or for worse. But how exactly did these mythical creatures end up lending their name to some of the internet's more annoying users? Well, let's start at the very beginning, shall we? That being with the origin of those mythical trolls. Trolls, of course, have their ultimate roots in the mythology and folklore of Scandinavia. Supposedly in Norse mythology, supposedly in Norse mythology, they're seen as a race relating to the Jotna giants who will refuse access to Asgard. As for where the word itself comes from, it's believed to derive from Proto-Germanic words meaning things like giant, monster and fiend, which in turn comes from Proto-Indo-European roots simply meaning flee or escape, as that's what you'd want to do when encountering one of these trolls. It seems that the first recorded use of the word troll we have dates all the way back to 1276, when Norwegian King Magnus VI made it illegal to try and wake the mound dwellers he referred to as trolls. From here, here, various stories of trolls started to make their way not only into folklore but into classic fairy tales too, perhaps most noticeably with the troll under the bridge in the Billy Goat's Graph. It was in tales like this where trolls started to form that image that they have today of being mischievous beings who harass and cause grief for anyone who gets in their way. From here we can already start to see where the name of these annoying mythical creatures, from here we can already start to see why the name of these annoying mythical beings got applied to annoying beings of the internet. This might seem like a pretty obvious answer, and there are no doubt deep links between trolls of Norse mythology and the trolls of Twitter and Reddit and the like. However, 
some argue that the concept of an internet troll came from a different source. One idea is that the concept of an internet troll came from the most unlikely of worlds, that being the world of fishing. Fishing is not an activity I am all that familiar with, but I am aware of the fact that there are different kinds of fishing. There's more to it than just throwing a hook with a worm in the water and hoping for the best. One of the seemingly more popular fishing techniques is called trolling. This is not to be confused with trawling. They sound similar, but they are pretty different. From what I can gather, trolling for fish involves setting up one or more fishing rods at the end of a boat and casting them out to the water. The boat then sails through the water, dragging the baited hooks behind them. This then tricks the fish into thinking that the bait is moving prey, which they then proceed to follow and devour, which gets them caught. It's seen as a highly efficient way of catching fish, though some say it involves a lot of luck. As to why this type of fishing is called trolling, we don't seem to be too sure exactly. One idea I found is that the term comes from an old French hunting term, meaning to go in quest of game without much purpose. You can somewhat understand why some believe that it was the fishing trolling that inspired internet trolling, as opposed to the trolls of Norse mythology. The concept of leaving an ever-moving piece of bait to lure unsuspecting fish into your trap is very reminiscent of the techniques that internet trolls use to bait people they want to annoy. Even fishing trolling's meaning of to quest without much purpose is similar to internet trolling, as online trolls go on quests to annoy people without too much purpose. In fact, all the way back in the early 70s, we see the word start to take shape in the sense it does today. This was not online however. It was in 1972 that US Navy pilots said they were trolling for MIGs, with MIGs being a kind of Russian aircraft. This seems to be in direct relation to the fishing kind of trolling. The Navy were trying to lure out these Russian planes in a similar way fishers lure out fish with trolling. While it doesn't completely link to our modern concept of trolling, it's interesting to see the word already begin to be used outside the realm of fishing and and mythology. Trolling in its modern sense didn't come around for a few more decades however. It seems that the concept starts to sprout into life in the late 80s and early 90s. The OED claims that the earliest recorded use of the term in this sense is from 1992. This came from a Usenet forum. I'm not entirely sure what Usenet is I must admit, but from what I can gather it was something of a precursor to the modern World Wide Web, created initially in 79 to transfer information across space. It's even still used today by people People. I'm sure there are some devoted Usenet users watching this video right now who can share their knowledge of the platform down below. The Usenet form of alt.folklore.urban is seen as being the birthplace of the modern troll. This group dealt with urban myths and modern folklore. How they adopted the term of troll and trolling we don't seem to be too sure however. But what some users of this form would do is post the same questions and comments on there over and over again. This was done so new users and long time users could be differentiated as new users will respond to these questions, while long standard users would have seen them a million times. This was actually seen as a good thing to start with interestingly enough, a way of figuring out the loyal from the newbies. That aforementioned 1992 comment which is seen as being the earliest recorded use of the term trolling in its modern sense read, If I didn't know better, I would swear that this post bears the marks of the inevitable Peter van der Linden in troll mode. I have no clue who Peter van der Linden is slash was, but they unwittingly played a vital role in internet history. By the late 90s, alt.urban.folklore grew more and more popular. This included a much higher rate of trolling too. So much so that this once positive action was seen as an annoying thing to do, as it is to this day. From here, trolling online grew in scope to mean sharing any sort of misinformation online. And by 1997, we have a webcomic by Bill Holbrook from his Kevin and Kel series, which explains that a troll is someone who posts incendiary forum messages just to start fights. The internet troll was truly born. However, it would take another decade or so for internet trolls to really hit the public conscious. This was in the late 2000s and early 2010s when things like the troll face and the troll a lot of song became incredibly popular memes online. I remember those days on the internet and they were wild, strange times. It was here that trolling became a mainstay online for better or worse. So the journey troll went on to acquire its current meaning went from Norse myth makers or fishermen to early internet users to 
to us today. So for better or worse, trolls are seemingly here to stay online, at least in the English speaking world anyway. Trolls of course exist online in every corner of the globe, but it seems that not every language uses the term troll or even their translation of the word troll for these internet bullies. In Chinese, the term of bai mu is used for trolls. This means white eye and originates from the idea that online trolls share information without even properly looking at it, just with the whites of their eyes. And in Japan, the term of suri is used, which means fishing. This relates back to the idea that trolling people online is a lot like fishing, and neatly brings us back to that trolling technique of fishing. Perhaps trolling for fish is very popular in Japan, I don't know. Other languages, however, do in fact use their word for troll, for those people who like to make our online lives a living hell. So it seems you can't escape the trolls, regardless of their names. Just try not to feed them. Now, if you've been watching Name Explain for some time, you may notice that I look a bit different. Specifically, I've lost quite a bit of weight. Well, over the course of 2020, I was able to lose over 60 pounds. This incredible weight loss was all done through Noom. So when they got in touch asking if they would be able to sponsor Name Explain, I was more than excited, as Noom is a platform I'm already a huge advocate and fan of. What I love so much about Noom is just how different it is to other quote unquote weight loss schemes. In fact, Noom is way more than just a tool that helps you lose weight. Noom is a complete lifestyle program that educates and teaches you how to get healthy and achieve your goals in life, whatever they may be, including weight loss in my case and many others. Noom achieves this in a variety of ways, from daily lessons all explained in a superbly easy to understand way, to an actual human coach and support group that you can get in touch with whenever you need to. Noom's program is based on practices from the world of psychology and specifically cognitive behavioral therapy. Without getting into the nitty gritty of psychology, this is really powerful stuff and lets you understand how exactly your mind works and lets you learn from and take control. As mentioned, I've already used Noom to achieve quite a large amount of weight loss and there was just so much I loved about it. One lesson that really hit home for me was their lesson on the ways we eat. One of the ways Noon taught me we eat is via fog eating. Fog eating is anytime you just eat and eat and eat without really being aware of what you're doing. It's something I was quite bad at and Noon made me realize that. Even just giving the concept the name of fog eating helped me massively. Now, every time I reach for the biscuit packet, the word fog eating comes to mind and I close the cupboard. If I had to explain Noom in as few words as possible, it would be that other weight loss schemes simply tell you what to eat. Noom tells you how to eat and why we eat. Something else that I love about Noom is that it doesn't shame you for eating badly at times. Noom fully understands that there will be times in our life where we do pig out and through its lessons it teaches you how to cope with these times so you can still enjoy your life and be healthy. No one should have to avoid birthday cake at a birthday party. I seriously cannot express just how much I love Noom and how much it honestly changed my life. When people ask me how I lost so much weight, I sing the praises of Noom non-stop. I'm beyond excited for my viewers to discover Noom too. You can start your journey with Noom today by visiting noom.com forward slash name explain and taking your free 30 second quiz. If you want to lose some weight, achieve new goals or just change your life for the better, then I seriously cannot recommend Noom enough. Once again, that's noom.com slash name explain for your free 30 second quiz. Thank you once again to Noom for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.